As I was saying, let's imagine we were doing this exam and let's pick our question from section B. <coughs> so number one, number one. <coughs> yes. Why? It's a graph question and it's a Newton question. Definitely do that. Number two, yeah, number two is okay. Simple harmonic motion, a pendulum, and um, yeah, more just simple harmonic motion. So number two is okay. Uh, number three is to do with waves, and it actually looks okay. Um, number three is good. Number four looks good. Uh, number four looks very good. So, so far, I'm definitely thinking one and four. Five. Nah. Pass. <laughs> Pass. And six is to do with Young's modulus. So, I'm thinking I would do one, two, and four. Well, what do you all think? Number two is the simple harmonic motion. Yeah? So, we're agreed that the best tree to do in this paper is one, two, and four. Now, of course, you can do other ones. I'm trying to teach you how to pick the questions from section B. Okay? Uh, so, let's start off with number one here. So, number one is our graph question. So, I'll use Excel, but uh, in the exam, of course, you can't. Now, what do I need to be conscious of here that I accidentally slipped on last year was the units. So let's just have a quick check. Are the units okay here? Uh, I think if you look at your exam, they are meters per second and they are second. So we have, and he wants uh, time on the X and velocity on the Y. You don't have yours? Hmm? Did you wash yours? But I'd like someone to read out the, the times first and then the velocity. So what are the times? Zero. Yeah. One. Zero to ten. Yeah. Is that it? Just okay. Ten. Oops. And then the velocities? Zero, four. Wait, hang on. Zero, yep. Yeah. Four, eight, twelve, sixteen, sixteen, sixteen. Three sixteen, sixteen, three sixteen. Oh, three sixteens, all right. Fourteen, twelve, ten, eight. So I can already picture how this graph is going to go. Look, it's going to go yeah. down. So what's the first question? Uh, first question is plot the graph. How many marks? Four. four. Easy peasy. Should be a full four marks. Don't screw it up, okay? Uh, let's see, where is it? Insert, chart. I should highlight it too, yeah. Uh, scatter, yeah. Um, let's go with that one actually. Next. <coughs> Next. So, um, next. All right, so the title here is Time Velocity Graph, and the x axis is time in seconds, and the y axis, whoops, is velocity in meters per second, and that should be it. And there you go, 404. Just like that. Oh, snap. Right. Are we happy with that now? What's wrong, Omar? Huh? <laughs> Nothing? Not okay. Right. Use the graph to calculate the maximum acceleration of the train during this time period. Um, I have to be careful here. Of course, I know what it is. It's got to be this one. But I wonder if the examiner is also as careful as me because this one here looks like it's Decre it decreases at a faster rate than this. But he does say acceleration. 
So I'm going to go with this. So in, in other words, he wants the acceleration. Uh, not too difficult. What's the easiest and quickest way to get acceleration from the graph? It's the slope, yeah. So it's the slope of this line. So the slope of this line is actually 4. Because what's the change in y? What's the, the height of the graph? 16. And the base? 4. So Now, of course, there's other ways to do it. You can use your formula, too. Uh, so this is a part 2. Uh, the a equals the slope, which equals 16 over 4, which equals 4 meters per second squared. Now, I've barely done anything, and I've got six marks. What's the next thing he wants? Deceleration. Again, let's look at the graph. So with the y, you go down from 16 to 8. So that's 8. eight. eight. Yeah, it's 16 here, isn't it? Yeah. And it goes down to... Eight over a time of uh, no, no four. So it's eight over four, yeah. So it's two. Yeah, but because you used the word deceleration, I won't put the minus in it. So is this part three now? Uh, all right, I'll write the minus in it. Uh, minus what did I say? Eight over eight over four, which equals that's two. So yeah, it's fine. Um, eight marks. Eight marks for not doing really anything. Use the graph to calculate the total distance travelled by the train. During now that's so during the, the ten seconds. So that's the area. Okay. Now I can't draw on this graph, but there's three shapes here. What are they? Triangle, Triangle rectangle. rectangle, and uh, another another kind of rectangle, oh sorry, there's four shapes, yeah, a triangle and then a rectangle underneath it, okay? So first this triangle, the formula is half the base by the height. So what's the base? Four, and the height? Sixteen. So, the S equals the area, which equals thirty-two, is it? And then the rectangle will be two times sixteen. Thirty-two. And then this rectangle here would be 4 times 8. 32 all such. And then the triangle, which is a half the base. So a half of 4 is 2. And the height? Uh, no, 8. 8. 8. Half of is 2. 2 times 8, 16 then. Uh, so we have 96, uh, 106, 112. The formula, yeah. There. Yeah, you could also. Or you can also use your S equals formula on the last piece. S equals UT plus a half AT squared. Right. Ten ma oh. Look at this. Look at this. Look at these ladies here now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm expecting you to go, heavens to Betsy, it's so hot in here. Come on. What country are you from, anyways? <laughs> this shouldn't be hot for you. <laughs> Have you been in Ireland too long now? You've gotten used to the colder weather, yeah? In fact, this is the hottest day since 2003. Yes. Uh, there it is, there. 25. What? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so what's wrong with you? Why are you so hot? This should be like uh, winter time, shouldn't it? Okay, uh, that's part A. We have already 10 marks. Half the question. And you should have full 10 out of 10 for this. Now, it goes further on. After 10 seconds, the train moves at a constant velocity of 8 until it collides with a stationary truck that's parked on the train track for some reason, uh, of 2,000 kilograms. The train and truck become locked together and continue to move forward with a combined velocity. Before the collision, the train can be considered to be moving freely. Determine the combined velocity of the train and the truck after the collision. Now, the train is, oh, dudes. The train is 15,000 kilograms and the truck is 
No, 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 no. Sorry, I thought he said combined mass. Combined velocity. Uh, so it's 15,000 and 2,000. So the mass of the train is 15,000. And then the mass of the truck is 2,000. What's the velocity of the train? Eight. 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 So this is U. Uh, eight. And what's the velocity of the car? It's at rest. The truck. It's at rest, is it? Uh, and then he wants the velocity after the collision. So after the collision, they move off at the same velocity. So what we'll say V1 equals X, for example, and V2 equals X also. You see what I've done there? Because they crash together and they move together. So conservation of momentum, what's conservation of momentum? Um, M1, yeah, M1, uh, U1 plus M2, U2, which here is zero, equals M1, V1, plus M2, V2. Sorry, no, of course not. Of course it's not. Uh, page, right, there we go. Right, um, please, 15,000 uh, 15, times 8. What's that going to be? 80, 40, 120. What is it? 1, 2, 0, 120,000 equals 17,000 times x. Yeah? Cancel those three zeros. So 120 over 17. What's that, please? 7.06. 7.06. This is the velocity. This is the velocity, yeah. Where did you see the 15,000? It says it actually at the very start of section B1. The top of the page. Yeah. Easy, yeah? yeah? Like, seriously, you should get 20 out of 20 for this question, right? So far. Uh, what's, how do you get the kinetic energy before? A half mv squared. Uh, well, there's only one thing moving before the collision. What's that? The train. The train. So, uh, B part two, kinetic energy, a half m v squared. So, uh, please tell me what this is. What is it? Four eight zero thousand. So, kilo joule. Velocity uh, 8 squared, B squared, velocity squared. Is that okay? Yeah. No, that, that's after the collision. He wants it before the collision. Now, he wants after the collision. So, again, I mean, what I find really strange about the recent physics exams is that they ask you to do the same thing twice, really. Which is good, because... Three marks, really, yeah. Now, we the, uh, now, what's the only difference in this one? No, the mass is different because yeah. they're stuck together, yeah. So what's the 17? 17, 17, uh, yeah. And then the velocity, yeah. Please tell me. Four, two, three, six, seven, zero, six. Uh, so that is going to be 424 kilo joules. What is the energy before the collision? And after? It drops. Last part is explain why uh, the energy has dropped, the kinetic energy. Yeah. Oh yeah, sorry, maybe I should make that a bit clearer. Explain why the energy seems to have disappeared. It hasn't really disappeared, so tell me what's happened. Yeah, so what's the key expression I'm looking for here? Friction is one, but how do I say this? I say energy, Yes. 
has lost, is lost, we'll say was lost, was lost to what? Let's list off the things how it could be lost. Sound. To heat, yeah, one. How else? Function. Sound. Yeah, maybe a little bit of light if it starts making some sparks. Will I say light? No, I think it's too small. Yeah, that's just too small. Uh, anything else? Yeah, but that's, see, that's not an energy. You have to give me an energy. Um, no, I think it's really just heat and sound, isn't it? I think heat will be the biggest one. Yes, trains hitting trucks tend to make sound. Um, anything else? No. Well, how many marks does he want? Two. So, two examples, heat and sound. Um, yeah, energy was lost to heat and sound. I guess to make sure I get full marks. Should I say something else too? Um, oh yeah, I know what I'll say. I'll say boat the train and truck, or was it lorry or car or something? Was it? Oh, it doesn't matter. Car, whatever. Something a lot smaller than a train. Uh, but the train and car are warmer after they crash, after the collision, yeah. Cool.